Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. We begin in Germany, where G7 leaders met with heads of state and governments of African countries in Bavaria on Monday. The discussions known as the G7 outreach meeting took place as the summit entered its second and final day in the resort of Kroon in the German Alps. According to a news release by the host German government, the G7 want to support African countries and their efforts uh, to reform, or rather their reform efforts, and thereby strengthen peace and security, growth and sustainable development in Africa. African and Middle East leaders, including from Nigeria, Senegal, Tunisia and Iraq, joined in the summit as part of an outreach group of non-G7 countries. Now, for some perspective on the significance of the G7 summit to African nations, Barack Maluka, analyst on African issues, joins us live uh, on the phone from Nairobi. Mr. Maluka, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much, uh, Vincent. Yes, now, when African uh, viewers uh, look at uh, their leaders um, in uh, Germany uh, on the sidelines of the talks uh, of the G7, they get a little excited. Give us a sense of uh, what really goes on here. I think uh, Africans uh, come as uh, junior observers, not even uh, junior uh, partners. And uh, their role is uh, to wait uh, to possibly be given some uh, instructions and some conditions on certain things which they need to go and uh, try to do back in Africa, uh, things that uh, would pertain to issues of uh, governance, uh, we saw that at some point, uh, some years back, we were talking about uh, uh, some uh, credits uh, uh, in the whole area of uh, energy and green gas emissions. Really, they do not go there to play any meaningful uh, role, really, as far as the continent goes. Now we are hearing about reform, and, uh, which is a kind of a misnomer that, if anything, we see that uh, there is regression, the kind of hope that... Uh, we saw in the, the early 90s is uh, is fast uh, receding with uh, the return of uh, leaders who want to stay in power for forever. Yeah. We are seeing economies that are going down, uh, so, derogation of human rights and yeah. the like. Yeah, but, but uh, do they, in this kind of uh, a, a setting, do they get an opportunity at least to uh, state uh, very clearly what would be their wishes in terms of their engagement with these powerful nations? I don't think so. This has been a tradition now for uh, close enough to a decade, perhaps slightly longer, and uh, we have not seen anything meaningful come out of uh, these uh, sideline uh, shows uh, with African uh, leaders in the various uh, uh, G7. At some point, uh, we had G8 um, meetings. I don't think anything very useful does come out of it, and I don't think that uh, African leaders have comported themselves uh, seriously enough for anybody to take them seriously. Uh, what is that uh, that they could do uh, so that they can actually be taken seriously to the extent that when they appear, they're not just on the sidelines, but they can be given a position where they can air their personal thoughts? First, uh, with their own uh, meetings here and uh, the ages of uh, the African Union, they need to craft uh, a more meaningful agenda for the people of the continent of uh, Africa questions of uh, good governance, questions of uh, uh, good uh, accountability, questions of uh, uh, seeing that uh, human rights are uh, placed at uh, the center stage that we see when they meet here. Uh, they, 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 they are meeting, actually. There's a minister's meeting going on in uh, South Africa just now. Uh, President Mugabe of uh, Zimbabwe uh, chairing an AU meeting in uh, South Africa and uh, representing actually the worst uh, values uh, that uh, any leadership uh, could uh, provide that you're saying that uh, they assemble to talk about how to get out of the ICC and mm -hmm. how to protect uh, each other when they are not doing well. They need to start taking themselves seriously, come up with an economic agenda for Africa, uh, come out uh, with the things that uh, dignify life in Africa, good leadership. Then now uh, when they go to other forums and they're making the international community, so to speak, they have got an agenda that other people can respect. Instead of just appearing in forums where they wait on the sides, they don't even know what they're going to be told, they're waiting to be given some instructions. I think uh, that uh, kind of uh, lowers 
the dignity of the African individual. <laughs> well, uh, let's hope somebody is listening to you. Uh, Barack, uh, thanks a lot uh, for your insights today. Barack Maluka is an analyst on African issues who joined us live via phone from Nairobi, Kenya. Now, President Barack Obama says he and other leaders of the G7 summit in Germany are discussing what he says is a list of difficult challenges that include standing up to Russian aggression in Ukraine and violent extremism. VOA White House correspondent Luis Ramirez is traveling with the president and has this report from the site of the G7 summit in the Bavarian Alps of Germany. President Obama arrived at the summit with a long list of challenges to discuss with his G7 partners. After a warm welcome from German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the president laid out the work that lies ahead for leaders at the Schloss Elmo Spa Resort. So over the next two days in Schloss Elmo, we're going to discuss our shared future, a global economy that creates jobs and opportunity, maintaining a strong and prosperous European Union, forging new trade partnerships across the Atlantic, standing up to Russian aggression in Ukraine, combating threats from violent extremism to climate change. And on all these issues, we are very grateful for the partnership and leadership of your Chancellor Angela Merkel. Mr. Obama comes to Germany amid lingering resentment over U.S. spying, and this meeting was meant to help heal what Chancellor Merkel said are occasional differences of opinion. With violence continuing to flare in Ukraine, President Obama is working to get European leaders to extend sanctions on Russia amid indications of a split on whether to do so. Global trade is formally at the top of the agenda. Mr. Obama is calling on Europe to work to resolve the Greek debt crisis. With Japan present, President Obama is also promoting his efforts to pass the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, a massive Pacific trade agreement being negotiated at the same time as a transatlantic agreement known as TTIP. Claude Barfield is a trade analyst with the American Enterprise Institute. The uh, president will um, bring the European leaders up to date about the TPP. I think he'll spend more time on that. Uh, and then at the same time, assuring them that the United States is still committed to the USAU agreement, the TTIP agreement. Not far from the summit, demonstrators used balloons to make this more than a talk fest that produces hot air or empty statements. What they want, they said, is real action to address world poverty. Luis Ramirez, BOA News, at the G7 summit in Germany.